In plate tectonics, we are looking at processes that are changing Earth's surficial appearance, mainly the location of continents and the location and size of ocean basins on the planet. Now, a very important skill that you'll want to have developed in an intro geology lab for plate tectonics is the ability to calculate how fast a plate is moving. So what we are going to do is we are going to look at a problem where we have a hot spot, and here we're looking at the Yellowstone hotspot, where we have the caldera and ages of the hotspot uh, based on its location in the past, so 12 million years old, 11 million, 10 million. We have point A, that is the location of the hotspot today, so an age of zero. And we have location B, that is in the caldera for the hotspot's location 10 million years ago. So the first thing we need to understand is why this is going to work, why hotspots allow us to track plate motion over time. So think of this marker as the hotspot. It's an upwelling in the mantle that's coming up underneath the lithosphere that is creating the volcanic activity. And for our purposes, we're going to say that the hotspot is stationary. It doesn't move. Now, in reality, that's not 100% accurate in geology. Uh, but at the introductory level, we're going to say the hotspot doesn't move. It stays in place. What's moving is the plate over the hotspot. And what happens is, over time, you have a volcano form here, the plate moves, new volcano forms here, and so over time the overriding plate gets dotted with volcanoes of varying ages that allow us to look and determine how fast was the plate moving while those volcanoes were forming in the past. So what we are going to do is we are going to use the velocity equation distance over time to calculate the rate the plate has moved over the last 10 million years over the Yellowstone hotspot. In order to do that, the first thing we need to do is we need to measure the distance A to B with our ruler, and we find that is 4.7 centimeters, so we write that down. Now your numbers might be different for the map that you're working with, because it might be a different size. The second thing we need to do is we need to measure the scale at the bottom of the map, and we find that that all the way across is 8.1 centimeters. We write that down. And then we need to write down the number on the end of the scale in our equation. So our distance is A to B on the map was 4.7 centimeters divided by the width of the scale, 8.1 centimeters, times the number on the end of the scale, which is 500 kilometers. And what we can do is we can go ahead and plug this into a calculator. So we have 4.7 divided by 8.1 times 500. And what we find is that our distance A to B, I'm going to round it, is 290 kilometers. Now, when we work with plate tectonic motion, we're often working with things that are centimeters per year. The average plate motion is between about 1 to 15, maybe 20 centimeters per year, averaging about 7 to 8 centimeters per year. So instead of kilometers for our distance, what we're going to want this in is centimeters. So let's go ahead and set up the stoichiometry. We need to convert from kilometers to meters. So we set up the next fraction. And then from meters, we're going to need to convert to centimeters. So we take our 290 kilometers, put it over 1. Kilometers are on the top. To get rid of them, we put them on the bottom of the next fraction. There's 1,000 meters in every 1 kilometer. To get rid of the meters, we put it in the bottom of the next fraction. There's 100 centimeters in every meter. So our distance then will be left in centimeters. So we go ahead and add the zeros at the end of the 290. And we see that we are looking at a distance of 29 million centimeters. So that is the distance part of the equation. What we also need is time. And time, again, we're looking at point B being 10 million years ago and point A being today. So we subtract the two, 10 million minus 0 for today, and we find that our age is 10 million years. 
So we now have the two pieces we need to figure out the rate. We have the distance is 29 million centimeters divided by our time, which is 10 million years. So we write out that for the velocity equation, 29 million centimeters divided by 10 million years. You can either use a calculator or because all these zeros just cancel each other, 29 divided by 10, we're looking at 2.9 centimeters per year is the average rate that the North American plate has moved over the Yellowstone hotspot in the last 10 million years. Now if we were not looking at today, say we were doing from 10 million years ago to 2 million years ago, we would have 10 million minus 2 million, which would be an 8 million year time span. But because we went to today, the years were zero, so we had a 10 million year time span. So follow these steps with the velocity equation to calculate plate motion when using a hotspot, either underneath an oceanic crust or a continental crust in an intro geology plate tectonics lab.